On the question of drinking, I mean, you know, AA are, are, are very straight, like, you, you mustn't drink at all. And this is too much for people because they think, oh, well, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'll have to make a, a new bunch of friends. And um, I knew this guy who, who I thought adapted it very well. So, so he would basically, um, well, his habit was to drink eight pints a night, but he would have the first pint beer, the second pint water, the second, you know, the third pint beer, and, and, and you know, so he just had four pints and he would be, you know, sober um, and okay and, and not, not you know, disgracing himself. And I, I thought that that was, a, you know, a very good way of managing, managing it. Okay, because uh, I think a lot of people drink to get drunk. Sure. Uh, and that's a very interesting question that people have asked. And uh, to some extent, it has a certain, to me, superficial appeal because it kind of uh, makes people feel better. It makes children feel like there's nothing wrong uh, and that they're really just, you know, leftover warriors from an earlier epoch of human history. So uh, we're going to take a closer look at this idea and go through it in some detail. Uh, it's going to get a little technical at some point, so I apologize for that, but uh, hang in there because as I promised you and as many of you have commented, uh, I do not dumb down this information for lay people. I speak to you as if you were my students, colleagues, uh, friends, and what have you. So, uh, so here we go. So this is obviously an argument that's going to appeal to millions of people. But just because an argument is appealing doesn't mean it's correct. All right. What's, what's more important to you to arrive at the truth or to feel comfort? It's not really a disorder. It's a mismatch. And I, I hear this sometimes also from the people who discuss neurodivergence as a view that there is nothing wrong here. It's just variation in brain wiring.